Salesforce, UiPath, Viva, Snowflake, you name it, these enterprise software companies were absolutely tripping over themselves on their way down over the past month. So what happened to enterprise software over this earnings season and what does it mean for investors trying to figure that out? My name is Brian Stoffel. We'll spend the next few minutes trying to figure that out. For those who don't know me, I've been a financial analyst for over 10 years. I've written over 4,000 articles for The Motley Fool. But perhaps most importantly, I've kept track of my results over almost 10 years. My results being the blue line, the uh, NASDAQ composite being the yellow, the S&P 500 being the red line. So with that in place, let's look at what's happened because year to date, there are so many big names in software as a service for large companies. That's what enterprise means. So companies that sell software to large companies have just taken a beating. Atlassian down 28% year to date. Snowflake down 30%. UiPath down about 50%. And the global cloud computing ETF that captures some, not all of these names, down about 10% year to date. And this is supposed to be the business model that is kind of bulletproof. So what's going on? Well, to understand this story, we've got to go all the way back, although it's not that far back, to November 30th, 2022. And that's when this tool right here, ChatGPT, was released to the public. And the thinking is, the story is, the narrative that's kind of captured our attention is that this was kind of the catalyst that unlocked the necessity for companies to start focusing on artificial intelligence or AI. And it's important to note that right here is where ChatGPT was released, that the effects have come in waves. So the first wave was chip makers. And this right here shows you NVIDIA's data center revenue growth rate. So you can see that the growth rate was pretty fast in the 2020s and 2021s. It was slowing down. But right here, ChatGPT was released. And then only about a quarter and a half later, we saw a massive reacceleration of revenue and reacceleration of revenue is a big deal because it kind of changes the whole ball game when you talk about how much is this company worth it went from 14 percent growth in data center chips to 171 and it's just kept on going since there so that was the first wave of an acceleration because of artificial intelligence what came after that was the second wave, and who is the second wave beneficiary? It is companies like Amazon's AWS, Microsoft's Azure, Google's cloud provider. And so again, we have ChatGPT being released here, and here we see it takes about a full year, but then we again start to see this reacceleration of revenue. This is AWS's revenue growth rate. It had dipped down at about 12.2%, came up ever so slightly in the third quarter of last year. And now we've seen it starting to really reaccelerate over the last two quarters, which again is a big deal because it kind of changes the entire narrative on how much a certain business or business segment is worth. So if the first beneficiary were the chip makers and the second were basically the cloud hosting providers, well, what might come next? Well, it makes sense to think that what would come next are the applications that exist in those AWS servers that use those NVIDIA chips, companies feeding more data through applications to benefit from AI. And so a lot of people, myself included, looked at a company like Snowflake. And we see ChatGPT was released right here. And we see that growth rate coming down, coming down, coming down. It's at about 32%. It did somewhat plateau here which investors should like to see but a lot of investors thought this this is the summer or because it's the first quarter you could even say the winter where we're going to see that reacceleration well snowflake reported and their revenue growth rate did accelerate although it's worth saying that that acceleration was minuscule to 33 percent during the previous quarter so it looks like we're seeing what we want to see. We're seeing a plateau and maybe a reacceleration of revenue growth. The problem is when the company gave guidance because they said they saw full year revenue coming in at 24%. That is not a reacceleration. That is a big letdown because Snowflake and a lot of other companies like Snowflake 
have been valued such that we would see that reacceleration. And when management says that reacceleration probably isn't going to show up, that causes a lot of people to reconsider how they're valuing stocks, which is why a lot of these stocks were down so much. And it wasn't just Snowflake. If we look at Datadog, we see the same thing. There is a reacceleration. That's good news. But management's guidance calls for just 22% for the full year, which again means that it is going to probably be going down if management is right. Or we could look at Cloudflare, which did a pretty good job of plateauing at about 32%. Dip down to 30%, management saying it'll be at about 28%. And it's worth pointing out that a lot of these are usage-based software as a service because there's an argument to be made that some companies like Salesforce that are based on the number of seats available might actually not benefit from AI in the current business model because AI might eliminate some employees. So that just leaves us with the question, what do we do from here? What's going on? What, why is this narrative not playing out? Well, there's a couple of possibilities. The first is we just got to take a breath and be patient. That revenue growth will show up eventually. It just takes time for companies to figure out how they're going to use this new tool of AI to benefit their businesses. And it'll show up, show up eventually. Although you'd hope that management of all these teams would have better guidance moving forward. The fact that they don't, means that maybe we got to be a lot more patient than we thought, or maybe we're wrong. What else might be a possibility? Well, using this crude meme from the internet, this is your enterprise customer, your big company that's buying software as a service, and you've got your SaaS application right here, which had been a favorite for a long time, and now they're looking at other AI investments, maybe something they're doing in-house, or maybe there's some piece of hardware, or maybe there's some new tool. The fact of the matter is these enterprise customers don't have unlimited budgets. They have to pick and choose where they're gonna spend their money, and it's possible that they're choosing to spend it on something else, and not these SaaS applications that a lot of us thought would benefit from this new wave, this new tool of AI. What else might be going on? Well, it could be that the moat around some of these companies is narrowing. Writing new code isn't as complicated as it used to be. Maybe these enterprise customers are using AI to create tools, to write code, to do the job that these SaaS enterprise applications perform. Now, I'm not particularly worried about that because it would take a big budget and I don't think it's necessarily in their best interest to do that, but it is something to keep your eye on for the SaaS tools that do the most basic of all things. And finally, it could just be that we've got this new tool, this AI tool that everyone was super excited about because it was going to increase efficiency and productivity. And then we realized so that the AI could kind of be our overlords. And no, I'm not saying that this is something like you might have seen in Terminator. What I'm really saying is, is we might have created something that's so efficient that it eliminates the need for a lot of humans to be in there or so efficient that it doesn't need to compute all the data. It has found the signal from the noise and it just focuses on that signal. And guess what? It doesn't consume all that much data, which means that the companies might not do as well or that they're going to have to rearrange their business model to capture more of the revenue from that. Well, what's the right answer? I don't know. Nobody does. However, it's probably some combination of all of these things. Now, what am I going to do in my own portfolio? Because I have a whole bunch of these companies. Well, I've teamed up with Savvy Traders so that anyone can see my full portfolio. Um, you can see real-time trades, past trades. Perhaps most important, you can ask questions and get real-time alerts. I've got a community tab where I even offer some videos when I'm explaining some of the moves that I'm making. If you're interested in seeing that, you can click the link on the show notes below. If you use the code June2024, that's one word, June2024, you can get 33% off of your subscription. It expires on June 10th. So what do you think is going on in enterprise SaaS? Let me know in the show notes below and stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel to get any updates on what might be happening here. Until then, Brian out.